Oh, hi there. I didn't see you come in. Uh, so we're going to continue uh, constructing our two observer diagram. Uh, and so let's get right to it. So one of the things that we talked about in the other video was that uh, all of the points um, that that uh, that are that are constructed on an actual space-time diagram's um, uh, uh, axes is uh, a space-time interval, and so we use these um, these hyperbolic graph paper to construct basically these two observer diagrams, so that we can actually get the points where uh, we actually get. Um, uh, where we have where we have our uh, our axes, so let's just get into it. So, I'm first going to start by drawing my t-axis and my x-axis. So my home my home frame home frame is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just a normal actually axis, and you see actually on here um, we uh, we have the normal points on the axis. So we have uh, the, you know this is this is a point uh, two two on the axis is right here um, and it's just we just read it normally so we just you know we, we, we go o up to over to and that's the point two two and so you, for reading the home screen we don't have to change anything about how we actually do anything um, the hard part sorry this is really this is really crooked let's let's redo this um, the hard part is actually when we're trying to uh, is when we're trying to actually do um, the uh, the other frame so let's assume we have uh, the um, the other frame is moving at a, a speed of beta equal to three fifths. All right. So we're basically moving at uh, the other frame is moving at a sp speed of light uh, three fifths of speed of light compared to the other one. And again, you can do your normal thing. Like imagine it's a uh, a train um, that's flying by us at three fifths of speed of light. Um, we want to basically graph some things that are happening in that train. Right. So the question is, um, how do we actually set up this second axis, this the, this um, this way of uh, of doing the second observer? Well, we're going to um, basically draw the axis uh, just like we do with world lines, um, and that's especially true with the t prime axis. So, for instance, if we want to draw the world line of this other frame, so let's say there's a clock in this other frame, uh, we just want to have it have a slope of one over beta or five thirds. So if we count one, two, three, four, five. And over one, two, three. All right, there's a slope of five thirds. And then I'm just going to use I'm using a book to do this, but I'm just going to get it all lined up nicely. And look at that. That is our t prime axis. So our t prime axis is actually just a world line uh, because it, it's just a um, it's it's just where where time is going forward uh, um, uh, in that frame. All right. Now that's pretty straightforward. Um, again, we've drawn world lines before. The hard part is trying to figure out how to actually mark the axes. So, for instance, if we have uh, if we have um, a point, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten seconds. Where is the point that's ten seconds on the other on on the on the prime in the prime in the prime uh, frame? Well, so. What we saw in the other video, and what you see in your book if you look at it, is that to find where this is, we actually just need to find the place where this 10 second, so where the hyperbola that's connected to 10 second, crosses this other line. So if we look here, if I follow this along, this is where the hyperbola, so I'm looking at this hyperbola, all right, that hyperbola crosses right there. And so this is also 10 seconds. Let's do it with one more just so we make sure we get it. Um, so 11, 12, 13, uh, let's do five. One, two, four. There's the five second mark. And if we follow the hyperbola for this one, we go and there is our five second mark. Now let's, let's do it perpendicular. There is our five second mark. All right, let's do one, one more, just to make sure we got this. All right, one, two, three, four, five. There's a 15 seconds mark. And again, um, we follow this along. Yep. 
There's 15 seconds here. You notice that the spacing is, is much greater on the prime axis than it is on the regular axis. That's just kind of the nature of how this works. Um, we also need to draw an x prime axis for it to be any use to us. Uh, it turns out the x prime axis, um, so, so uh, the t prime has a slope of 1 over beta. Um, x prime has a slope of beta, it turns out. So um, our beta is 3 fifths. So now we just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. There is a derivation for why this is true. I am actually not going to go into it. It is relatively involved. I recommend checking out your book. Um, it's a little hard to follow, uh, but if you do it a couple of times, it becomes straightforward. If you if you really, really struggle with it, don't worry too much. Just know that the x prime does have the slope of, the, of, the slope of beta um, and, and just kind of deal with it. So there's our x prime. All right. Again, if we want to know where the labels are, let's do five seconds on this one. one um, so first, let's do the unprimed one. One, two, three, four, five. There's five seconds in the unprimed frame. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. There's uh, ten seconds in the unprimed frame. Let's go figure out where that same where those same positions are in the prime frame. Again, we just follow the hyperbola for some of the same logic. This is the five second, and again, if I follow this, this is the ten second mark. All right, and now we've got a fully uh, a fully uh, fleshed out uh, two observer diagram. And we can now graph things in either frame. We can either graph things in the prime or in the unprime frame, whether we're given coordinates in the prime or the unprime frame. Um, I will have another video that actually shows you how to uh, get points. Uh, read points and plot points uh, from one frame to the other. Uh, so go ahead and check that out and hopefully it'll be helpful. I hope uh, this hope this helped you all out and I'll see you in class.